all to law seekers thorough newspaper analysis for 26th august 2023 starting with the today's agenda of the day the editorial part even if the accused is not present trial can still proceed what the proposed crpc says which is from the indian express then we will discuss some news update which includes the national news international news important days awards and sports and then lastly we'll discuss some few statements judgment that are being passed by the honorable high court and the honorable supreme court of india now even if the accused is not present trial can still proceed what the proposed crpc says now as per our uh, the editorial portion that we explain we always explain what is the context what is the judicial uh, pronouncements on that what is what is the legislative status and what would be the future of that particular uh, topic that we are talking about so let us understand the context of it a person accused of crime can be tried and convicted in his absence as if he was present in court and was waived and has waived his right to fair trial for all offences under the proposed bhartiya nagrik suraksha sahita 2023 the bill that seeks to replace the code of criminal procedure 1973 now as per the bill if an accused is not present court can proceed to try him 90 days after the date on which charges are framed now trial in absentia provision in sahita section 356 not withstanding anything contained in the sahita or any the law for the time being in force when a person is declared as a proclaimed offender whether or not charged jointly has absconded to evade trial and there is no immediate prospect of arresting him it shall be deemed to operate as a waiver of the right of such person to be present and tried in person and the court shall after recording reasons and writing in the interest of justice proceed with the trial in the like manner and with like effect as if he he was present Under this sahita, I pronounce the judgment. Now, proviso to to this particular section, provided that the court shall not commence the trial unless a period of ninety days has lapsed from the date of framing of the charge. Now, what is the current structure? Right of accused to be present. The right of an accused. to fully participate in the trial and offer a defense is a part of due process of law while the code of criminal procedure currently provides for recording evidence in the absence of the accused a trial in absentia is not permitted if an accused is, is absconding it is a duty of the state to locate him before the trial begins Conv convicting an accused in absentia is fine if the object is to provide the closure to the victim but it does not provide a fair opportunity for the accused by professor kumar askanand pande a criminal law expert at the national law university lucknow now trial in absentia and other statutes a trial in absentia is prescribed in stringent and anti terror legislation such as the Un the unlawful activities prevention act where an alternative criminal law fra framework applies in such laws the burden of proof is reversed with the onus on the accused to prove himself not guilty rather than state carrying the duty to prove guilty against the accused now so this was all about uh that what would be the provision uh in the new upcoming bill what is the right of the accused in the present act and what other law says when the accused is not present now coming up to the national news of the day no tricolor 
anthem at wrestling world championship after world body suspends india in another blow for indian wrestling the united world wrestling that is uww has suspended india for failure to conduct elections india's wrestler will still participate in world championship next month but it will be as neutral and not under the national flag moreover in case indian wrestlers finish on top of the podium the national anthem will not be played the selection trials for the world championship were to be held in patiala on august 25 and 26 however the fate of the event is not now is now unknown the united world wrestling had threatened to suspend india back in june when it issued a strongly worded statement condemning the treatment and the detention of the protesting wrestlers back then it had urged the indian olympic association to respect the 45 day deadline to conduct the elections for wrestling federation of india failing to do so may lead united world wrestling to suspend the federation thereby forcing the athletes to compete under a neutral flag the wfi that is the wrestling federation of india elections have been long overdue after the term of its former president brij bhushan sharan singh who has been accused of sexual harassment ended earlier this year the polls were postponed toys owning to court orders now about the wrestlers protest in january 2023 wrestlers including vinesh fogat sakshi malik bajram punia stage a sit-in demanding the disbanding of the wrestling federation of india due to alleged sexual harassment of female wrestlers by prej bhushan in april 23 protest resumed and demands for filing of an fir against prej bhushan and for his immediate arrest later after the honorable supreme court intervention delhi police registers two fir against him including one under the pocso act for offenses against a minor scheduled for june wfi elections faced multiple postponements due to widespread protest from various quarters including wrestlers a subsequent rescheduling for august 12 also fell through this is the third suspension of wfi's membership previous suspensions occurred in january and may the next national news mastercard signs up as icc sponsor for 2023 world cup the international cricket council has announced a brand tie up with mastercard digital payments company for the upcoming men's cricket world cup 2023 to be held in india between october 5th to 19th november under this tie up mastercard will be the global partner for the world cup icc chief executive jof elardes said we are delighted to announce mastercard as a global partner for icc men's cricket world cup 2023 the pinnacle event of the one day game mastercard brings its rich experience of sports partnership to the table and the icc is looking forward to collaborating with a renowned global brand to bring many benefits to cricket lovers across around the world now benefit for the card holders in a statement the company said it will provide unique experiences to its card holders and customers including banks through exclusive benefits In addition to the exclusive 24 hour pre sale sale window mastercard card holders will be able to avail several benefits such as chance to meet the cricket legends get up close to the men's cricket world cup trophy and experience unique access on match days now about mastercard the ceo of mastercard is michel mebach also in the news recently mastercard enabled cvc fee transactions online for securely stored cards the icc men's cricket world cup 2023 which will be the 13th edition of the men's cricket world cup has been scheduled between 5th october to 19th november 
this will be the first ICC World Cup event completely hosted by India. Now, the national news of the day, India and Greece to upgrade ties to become strategic partner. On concluding the big summit in South Africa, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday visited Greece on the invitation of the Greek counterpart, Karyakos Mitsotakis. Mr. Modi is the first Indian Prime Minister to visit the country in 40 years. India and Greece agreed to upgrade bilateral ties to the level of strategic partnership. Announcing the decision in Athens, Mr. Modi said, two countries, the two countries will collaborate in the field of defense industry and will soon conclude an agreement on migration mobility to smoothen movement of skilled population of both sides. Prime Minister of the Greece in a statement expressed commitment to freedom of navigation and said there are concerns in this regard in both the Eastern Mediterranean and the Indo-Pacific region. PM Modi was conferred with the Grand Cross of the Order of Honor in Athens by the President of Greece, Katrina and Seklapol Lo. The last high-level visit to Greece took place in September 1983 when then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi traveled to the country. India and Greece enjoy civilizational ties which has strengthened in recent years through cooperation in areas like maritime transport, defense, trade and investments and people-to-people -people ties. Now, the national next national news, India to upgrade Ladakh landing strip to airbase just 35 kilometer from light, uh, from uh, the line of actual control. Okay, so the advanced landing ground in eastern Ladakh, Neoma will be upgraded to a fully equipped airbase that can operate numerous fighter jets like Rafale, Sukhoi-30, MKI and light combat aircraft stages. The airbase will bluster India's air operation on the Naoma ALG is only 35 km from the line of actual control where tensions have been simmering for many years despite several rounds of commander level talks. The Indian Air Force transport aircraft AN-32 landed in Neoma airstrip in 2009 in the first landing by a fixed wing aircraft in this actual, in this, um, that is advanced landing ground where until the Indian Air Force operated only helicopters. After the Neoma ALG is upgraded to an airbase, it will significantly add more muscle to Indian forces, forces in the Ladakh region simply because of the strategic location it occup would occupy and the Pardapur air base that supports operations in Siachen is also close by. Now, uh, the advanced landing ground are not fully fledged air bases, but landing strips that can be used to drop off troops and supplies. Some can be used for refueling fighter jets. India has two air bases in Ladakh at present, one in Leh and other in Pardapur. Both operate fighter jets. The international news for Women's Equality Day 2023, what, are, what is the date, history and the significance and the celebrations behind it. The Women's Equality Day commemorates the historic movement in the United States when the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was officially certified in 1920, granting women the right to vote and marked a significant milestone in the struggle of women's rights and gender equality. Amendment to 19 prohibits any U.S. state and the federal government from denying the right to vote to any American citizens on the basis of sex. Women's Equality Day is observed on 26th August each year. Now, the history behind this day, American women in the early 19th century could not inherit property and earned a half a man's wages in any available job. By early 20th century, other countries including Finland, New Zealand and the United Kingdom had legalized voting for women as this movement swept across the world. The 19th Amendment to the Constitution was first introduced in 1878 in the US but failed to gain traction at the time. It was only after women's involvement in World War I effort that their contribution to, truly came into light and women's suffrage movement became gaining support. 
So a constitutional amendment requires an approval from two thirds of the states. Hence, 36 of them had to ratify the 19th amendment before its passage. On the 50th anniversary of the passing of the 19th amendment in the constitution, the National Organization for Women now had organized a nationwide strike for equality. Congresswoman Bella Absa, also known as Betteling Bella, had then designated August 26 as Women's Equality Day following this strike. The day was first celebrated in 1973. Now, Bengal governor approaches ISRO for tech to curb ragging on campuses. West Bengal governor Mr. C. Ananda Bose has reached out to the Indian Space Research Organization to identify an appropriate technology solution to curb the menace of ragging on college and university campuses. A first-year undergraduate student died earlier this month after allegedly being ragged and sexually harassed in a hostel of Jadavpur University, sparking an outcry in West Bengal. A total of 13 people, including both current and former students, have been arrested in connection with the death of the undergraduate student in Jadapur University. Now, let us talk about a few facts on ISRO. ISRO is a, an organization that we are recently came up to news for Chandrayaan 3 mission. It is an Indian space agency founded in 1969 to develop an independent Indian space program. Its headquarters are in Bangalore and the present chairperson is Mr. S. Somanath. Now, Drunk on Love, book explores Kabir's life through his poetry vision. A new book aimed to capture the life of mystic poet Kabir through popular legend, his vision and his poetry that has been quoted and translated extensively. The book Drunk on Love, the life, vision and songs of Kabir published by Harper Collins, India, and written by writer-singer Vipul Rikhi, presents the 15th century poet as he is described, quoted, and loved in popular imagination. Whenever, wherever I perform Kabir songs, people ask me for a book on Kabir, which not only captures his life, but also the essence of his message. This is that book. Singing Kabir and meeting many lovers of Kabir across India inspired to write this book which presents a Kabir who is loved and celebrated by the ordinary people of the country. In Drunk on Love, Vipul Rikhi brings the essence of Kabir to a contemporary readership. Now, the legal update of the day coming from Meghalaya High Court strikes down state guidelines barring teachers from engaging in political activities. Upholding the democratic right of teachers, the Meghalaya High Court has struck down the executive guidelines introduced by the state government in 2021, which prohibited teachers from engaging in political activities and, cont and contesting elections. The division bench of Chief Justice Sanjeev Banerjee and Justice W. Dean Dong, Ding Dong observed, again, as this great nation was conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men and women are created equal, the right of state government to interdict a citizen's right to contest the election to any legislative or public body or office in a political party by making a vanishing distinction between a position and a person must be guarded interest, guarded against. The case revolved around the amendment brought by the state government to the executive guidelines governing government-aided educational institution this guidelines, though not backed by any specific law, carried weight as institutions seeking financial aid were required to adhere to them. The amendment in question barred teachers from offering themselves as candidates for election to legislative body or holding positions in political organizations and was accordingly challenged by several assistant professors in government-aided college. This particular thing was held in state of Meghalaya versus Bright Starwell Marbeng and others. The next legal update, raising faces BJP slogan doesn't constitute any offense from Madras High Court in the case of Leish Sobia versus Inspector of Police and others. Raising faces BJP down slogan is not an offense. 
the madras high court observed while quashing an fir lodged against louis sofia arresting arrested for raising slogans against the bjp government on board a flight in the presence of formal tamil nadu bjp president and current governor of bengal telangana and lieutenant governor of puducherry tamilisai sundarajan addressing another aspect of the case the high court said that once remand under section 505 was rejected the police had a duty to follow the procedure under section 155 crpc and the court added a specific para explaining the section 155 sub clause 4 of crpc and how it relates to the particular case that's all for the today's news update and the editorial portion keep learning thank you for watching